My math day usually starts with a number talks. I bring the kids to the floor and then um, I put a problem on the board and they have to mentally solve the problem. They don't have whiteboards, paper, pencil, nothing. It's all mental math. Number talk structures that I put in place are, I start by writing the problem on the board and then the students have think time. No one's allowed to talk. They have to just solve the problem inside their head. And then I have signals that they use um, to let me know where they're at in their thinking. So that's how I formally assess where they're going and um, how they're progressing with the problem. So a fist on the chest means that um, I'm thinking of a strategy, um, I haven't solved the problem yet, but I'm, I'm working on it. And then one thumbs up means that I've solved, I've thought of a strategy, I've solved the problem, I have an answer. And then some kids will have a different strategy that they um, use to solve the problem. So then they'll put two fingers up or three fingers. So we use those signals and um, they have their think time. And as they're thinking, I look to see um, how they're doing. And if I see that a lot of kids are stuck in this position, then I'll do a little pair share where they can talk with a neighbor so then maybe a friend can give them a strategy and then they can go from there so that hopefully by the time I ask for an answer, I see pretty much everybody with a thumbs up. I think putting number talks as part of my daily routine has really helped my kids with um, when they grapple with a problem. They have several different strategies that they can use. They know that they're allowed to uh, work with a partner to help them figure out. So I think it helps them greatly because they're learning mental math and when they're trying to solve a problem, that part will come a little bit easier for them. They especially like it when I call on them because they like to share their different strategies that they use. And we've been doing it for about two months and they still seem pretty excited to come to the floor and, and see what they're gonna do next. All right, so the first number talks I'm gonna put up on the board, but I wanna review um, our signals. So when I show you a signal, I want you to raise your hand, and uh, if I call on you, I want you to tell me what that signal means, okay? So if I see this, what does this mean? Ava? Uh, it means that we're, I'm working on a strategy. Okay, I'm working on a strategy, all right? And what if I have one thumbs up? Rakaya? That means that um, you figured out the problem. Okay, you've got an answer to the problem. You found one solution to the problem. What if I do this? Noah? Have I thought of another strategy because we can have more than one strategy to solve a problem. Is that right? Yeah. All right. And then if I have three, it means what, boys and girls? Three, three, three strategies. All right. But the goal is not to get a bunch of strategies, but the goal is to be able to solve the problem quickly. Correct? Yeah. All right. Boys and girls, so this is our number talk lesson for today. So will you go ahead and show me your signals when you're ready with an answer? Okay, what's the answer, boys and girls? 612. Okay, I think I heard a different number over here. Did someone say something different? I figured out a mistake. Oh, okay, so, well, what did you get before that? 613. Okay, um, and who would like to share their strategy with us? All right, Ezra. So, what I did is, <coughs> I took the 300 from the 365. Okay. And the 200 from the 247. Added those two together and got um, 500. Okay. Can you tell me why you did that? Because I don't like using whole numbers and just adding them together. I like to break it down. Okay. So I can have easier numbers for, for myself to add. All, all right, perfect. Okay, then, then what did you do? I got the 6 and turned it into 60 from the 365. Okay. And the 4 and 40 from the 247. Okay, so this 40. is 40, not 4, right? I said 40. I'm, good 40. job. And then I got 100. Okay equals 600 and then I added 500. What do you, what do you mean 100 equals 600? 100 and 500. Oh, so you added those two yes. together? Okay, and all right. I now got, I get it. Um, 600. Okay. And then 
I took the the five from the three hundred sixty five and mm -hmm. the seven from the two hundred forty seven. Added those two together and got twelve, and then added the twelve to the six hundred and got six hundred twelve. Now, who can raise their hand and tell me what strategy um, did Ezra use to solve this problem? Rakaya. Um, the break apart method. Okay, the break apart method. All right. Did anybody do um, a little different strategy? Um, Ava? Well, the strategy that I used was the count by tens and ones on a number line strategy. Okay, the count by tens and ones? All right, so yes. what did you, how did you do that? So, in my head, I pictured a number line, mm -hmm. and then on the number line, I, I jumped 300. Okay, yeah. so you had a little number line inside your head. I started at 365, and, and then I jumped 200. Okay. And I landed at 565. Okay. Then I know that 60 plus 40 equals 100, but there there's 65, so instead I did, I jumped 35. Okay. And I got 600. And then I jumped the other five, and I got 605. Okay. And then I jumped seven, and I got 612. All right. So I like what you did here, that you remembered that 65 and 35 made 100. And that makes it a, an easy number to add with, doesn't it? So she just jumped the 35. So she still doesn't have the full 47 that she added, does she? So then she has to add five more because that was nice and easy because of the 35 um, and then five makes 40. And then she took the extra seven to get to 612. Okay, and then Nathan, you said that you said um, 613, but you found your mistake. So where did you make your mistake? My did the same as Ezra, but I thought the five was a six. Okay, so you did the same method here, yeah, but five. you thought the, this five was a six? Yeah. So that would give you one too much, wouldn't it? All right, good job. I'm glad that you figured that out. When I'm questioning the students, first of all, I know my students pretty well. And if we're starting a new strategy, I try to think about the students that I think that might already know that strategy. And so I will call on them. And then as they're explaining um, their thinking process, I'll stop them and have them uh, restate what they said to make sure. And then if I need to, then I will step in and I will restate it so that, it, it's, uh, that I make sure that all the kids are understanding what they're doing. After number talks on some days, we go back to our seats and we do a performance task or a hot problem from a previous lesson or a future lesson. The kids will read the problem and solve it together in a group. Today we did, um, we did a performance task called Cupcakes Galore where the kids had to read the problem and figure out how many different ways, uh, different combinations of cupcakes they could have using chocolate and strawberry with 24 cupcakes. So they read the problem and then they had a little bit of think time and then they were asked to start the problem on their paper. And I didn't want them to completely solve it because I wanted to kind of see where they were at and see if any students were struggling with how to start the problem. And then as they're doing that, I walk around the room and I look for specific examples of ways that they could start the problem. And then I'll call up a couple individuals at a time to come up to the um, Elmo and share, and then they tell exactly what they did to start the problem. So after we do that, um, then they go back to working on the problem on their own. So what do I have here? Who can raise their hand and tell me what this is? Ava, what is this? Uh, cupcake baking pan. It's a cupcake baking pan. You can make brownies in it, you can make cupcakes in it, you can make all kinds of things in it. Who can raise their hand and tell me how many cupcakes I could make with this pan? Ansel, how many cupcakes could I make? 24. And how do you know that there are 24 there? Because I counted this side and the top, and I, then I know this side. Okay, so you counted the rows, and then how many were in each row, and then you did what? I moved. 
you multiply them. So there's 24 cupcakes that you can make in this pan. So I have a little problem for you on your desk, and it's about a girl who wants to make some cupcakes. So go ahead and turn your paper over, and we're going to read the problem together. Okay, so I need everybody's eyes on their paper. I want 100% participation. All right, ready, read. All right, so I want you to stop for a second and think about how you might solve this problem, okay? No writing yet, just in your brain, stop and think. I'm just gonna give you a quick minute, okay? Get your thoughts in your head and then we're gonna pair share. You're gonna share with your elbow partner or your cross partner um, what strategy you might use to solve this problem. All right, go ahead and share out with your partner, please. So I think you would have to put the cupcakes, uh, you could put the chocolate ones in these, this pan, and the strawberry ones in this pan. You can do, for the cupcakes, for chocolate, you can do, one, this one can be three, this can, this three can be strawberry. And then chocolate can do it, and you can keep on going on and on until you get 24, and you can do that in two pairs. Yeah. So just like, okay. like 24 divided by 3, mm -hmm. which is it. So you can do, I already have here, um, we're all trying to come up with that. Mm -hmm. You could have um, 12 and 12, and... 13 and 11 and 14 and uh, 10 and you can do a lot of different things. Do you remember a strategy that we learned on a way to organize that in the, all the your thoughts that you just had? No? no? I don't remember? Anybody remember a way that we learned that we can organize those thoughts? So how would you write that on paper, Lucas? Yeah. If I told you, if that was, if this was a, a test and I, you had to show your work, how would you show me your work that you figured that out? I would do 12 and 12. I would write how many cupcakes in each. Okay, so show me how, how what are our choices in, in flavors? Um, two. Okay, but what are? Strawberry and vanilla. Okay, so what would you do with straw, the word strawberry and vanilla? I mean, strawberry and chocolate. Okay. Uh, that, yeah. You like vanilla, huh? You want to make vanilla cupcakes. Okay, well, that's not so, an option today. I, I would write chocolate, chocolate, okay. and um, strawberry. Okay. And then divide that mm. and so then I would have 12 and 12. Um, 11 and 13, 10 and 14. So after they pair shared, then they started doing their work. So I walked around the room to see if I can find some good starts in that strategy. And I called a student up. Um, I sat with him and um, I said, well, what's another way besides 12 chocolate, 12 strawberry? And he said, well, 11 chocolate. Okay, well, if you have 11 chocolate, then how many strawberry would you have? And then with that, he just went on down 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, until he got to the bottom. And then I had walked away, and I was curious, was he going to figure out then the opposite of that? If I have um, 11 chocolate, then later I could have, you know, um, 13 chocolate and 11 strawberry. Um, so, and I went back, and he had, he had gotten all of them. So, but you have zero chocolate. Is that, is that a, a possibility? Yeah. 
Yes. Okay. And or. Oh. It says and or. So does that mean that you have to have both chocolate and strawberry? No. Oh. All right. So. What, what did we call that that Lucas made? Who can raise their hand and tell me, how did he organize his information? <coughs> Zoe? Into columns. Okay, he made it into two different columns. And um, are you sure that you got all the different combinations? Um, yes. You're positive? Okay. All right. Okay, you can bring your paper back. Nice job, Lucas. Wonderful job. I see you've organized it with a table. I see the numbers. So here's the last thing I would like you to do with this, is at your table, see if you can count how many total combinations, possible combinations there are. So why don't you just take a, a, a couple minutes and uh, talk at your table and see if you can come to an agreement on a number. How many possibilities are there? No, but what if you, you can do a division of those and division problems that were just not really that what meant that I think that you just count them. You count, count them. Count them all. So you have 12 strategies. Yeah, no. Both trays, so that it goes down to 11 and 13, and then 10 and 14, and 15 and 9, and 16 and 8, and 17 and 7, and 6 and 18, and 5 and 19, and 4 and 20, and 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 25. Wait, what ones do I not have then? Yeah. yeah. Oh, 19 and 5. How do you make this? I did this whole tray. Strawberry. And I did all of this. Six. And six. And then what I did. I did six plus 12. Because I have 12 here. Oh, so you don't have them all then, do you? Hmm. Because I found one. Couldn't I do 17 chocolate and 7 strawberry? Yes. Oh. Are there any others you're missing? How will you know when you have them all? How will you know when you have them all? Talk about that. How will you know? Well, no, because... Well, we have the trees here, so... We could go like try to count all the ways. Mm -hmm. So you could try to count all the ways. So you could fill the first cup with what? Um, chocolate or strawberry? Uh, chocolate. Chocolate. And the rest of them could be? Strawberry. Okay, how many strawberry would that give you? Um, 20. 20. If you did one strawberry, how many chocolate? 23, good, good. If you did two strawberry, how many chocolate? Two strawberry, 22 chocolate. If you did three strawberry, how many chocolate? If you did four strawberry, how many chocolate? Hmm, what am I doing? You're subtracting like this. Oh, subtracting down a number. Every time you're I talk about what I'm doing. You're subtracting down, 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 down,
so that the kids are doing the thinking and they're coming up with the solutions on their own instead of me just telling them this is how you solve the problem. So there were times when uh, Mr. Freethy and I would step back and we would, um, he would whisper to me or we would talk about what we're seeing and which problems would be a good one to come up and share and um, what kinds of questions do uh, we want to ask the kids uh, to get them to show their thinking on the problem. You know, having someone come in your room while you're teaching can, can be a little nerve-wracking. But to me, I welcome it, especially being new to this. Um, I just, I love getting help from other people. And that's one of the things I love about this program is I'm learning new things and I'm sharing them with my other grade level partners and giving them ideas and then they share with me. And so sometimes it was like, oh, I was thinking that too. And other times it's like, oh, I didn't think of that. And so it just kind of validates where I'm at, like I am doing okay but also like there's still room for improvement and different ways that I can ask kids things. You can physically see the, the light or the wheel turn when they get that aha moment, which is very rewarding.